Hi there. We're going to take a look at the standard error of measurement and how we can calculate that using Excel. First, I want to talk briefly about what is the standard error of measurement. Um, and you can see the definition there at the top of the Excel sheet. The standard error of measurement in, in lay people terms gives us a way to measure the ability of an assessment to produce accurate scores. And you can see by what we're going to be calculating, ultimately, what the standard error of measurement will give us is a range of scores. And we can use that to say that there is a 95% chance that the real score or the true score on someone's assessment that they take is between the lower limit and the upper limit, which we will calculate using the standard error of measurement. So, what I've outlined here is a group of assessment scores. This could be on a personality assessment. This could be on a, an aptitude test. This could be on a, any kind of test that you can imagine. We're gonna use those as examples, but you could even calculate the standard error of measurement for a test that's not related to hiring. So for example, um, a, a mechanic or an engineer might use the standard error of measurement on a test that they're performing uh, in their job, and then that would allow them to get the, the range of scores uh, that they need. So what I've done already is calculated uh, the assessment one scores already. And so I've already calculated the statistics for this first assessment. And I'm gonna do this such that I can demonstrate the difference between these two assessments and how much of an impact reliability makes to the range of scores that you can get in an assessment. This will highlight the importance of reliability when it comes to assessments. And so if we have this first assessment, and I've already calculated, as I said, the, the statistics here, and I've given a description of those statistics over on the right-hand side. I'm gonna use those exact same scores for the second assessment, the only thing I'm going to change is the reliability. And so let's calculate these things together. So the first one is the mean, and that's simply the average of the scores. So I'm gonna type that in here, equals average, open paren. I'm gonna click over here on cell A2, control shift down to highlight all of the scores, then close parentheses and enter. That gives us the mean, so it's the same. Standard deviation, it's an Excel formula, so pretty straightforward, equals STD EV, and this is a sample. This is not the entire population, this is a sample, so it's dot S, you can see that formula here. So I'm gonna double click that, it's gonna give us our open parentheses, same thing. I'm gonna highlight all these scores, so control shift down, and then I'm gonna close our parentheses, hit enter, and it will show our standard deviation, same thing. Reliability, this is going to be something that you would find in a technical manual of an assessment that you're using. So let's go, the, the first one was 0 0.08. Let's say this one is uh, 0 0.7, which is not unheard of in, in the realm of uh, assessments. The alpha, um, you're going to choose this based on the situation. Typically, what we see is 0 0.05. That's what gets us to this 95% chance um, here. Sometimes you might use uh, 0 0.01. That would give you give us a 99% chance that the real score is between our upper and lower limit. But let's, for our example here, stick with um, 0 0.05. The z-score, this is a standard calculation within Excel. And you can see the, the formula there is um, norm.s.inv, which means inverse, one minus the alpha divided by two. So we're just going to copy that score over and it's gonna be the same thing. Standard error of measurement is simply the standard deviation times the square root of one minus the reliability. So we'll enter this formula in, equals STD, standard deviation, oops, I'm sorry, that's not, 
equals, we've already calculated the standard deviation. So we're going to click on the standard deviation times square root of one. So it's going to be SQRT is the formula for square root of one minus our reliability, which we have up here, 0 0.07. I'm going to put this in brackets as well. And you see we get a different number um, because we're using the 0 0.07 as the reliability instead of the uh, 0 0.08, which we expected. The confidence interval is our z-score times the standard error of measurement. So equals our z-score 1.96 times standard error of measurement, which is here. So our upper limit is just gonna be our mean plus our confidence interval that we just calculated. So we're gonna say equals mean plus our confidence interval, 16.92. And our lower limit is gonna be our mean minus our confidence interval. So equals mean minus that same confidence interval and you can see here's our upper limit and our lower limit for our second assessment with our reliability of 0 0.7. You can see the difference here um, in our, our range. So how we would interpret this is that on our first assessment, there's a 95% chance that the real or true score is between 36.24 and 63.88. And for our second assessment, our real score would be, there's a 95% chance that the real score would be between 33.14 and 66.98. And you can see the difference there in the ranges is we'll do this minus this. There's a 6.21 point difference in those ranges, which means that if we change the reliability of our assessment from 0.08 to 0 0.07, a simple change of a tenth of a, a point, we have a big difference in the, the range of our scores. And so this really highlights why reliability is such an important statistic to look at when you're um, evaluating an assessment. Hopefully this helped uh, understand the standard error of measurement and why it's so important. Thank you.